So the fishermen at Nipper Harbor who live off today's sea live on the floor of an ancient sea. We know these rocks once formed the floor of an ancient ocean. How did they get here? Well, the process is a very complicated one, and it really is a story of mountain building. And so for the Appalachian Mountains, we began with an ancient sea. Now that sea differed from the Atlantic in one rather important way. The modern Atlantic Ocean is spreading. Sea floor crust is being created along the Atlantic Ridge. In fact, North America is moving from Europe at the rate of about two or three centimeters a year. The ancient ocean was shrinking. In other words, Europe and North America were coming together. Now, how does that happen? Do the rocks between buckle? Do they fold? Do they bend? Uh, not so. The first part of the process begins with a slab of crust, or ocean floor bottom, sinking into the earth like so. As it gets down deep, it gets hotter, it begins to melt, magmas are generated, they move up to surface, and you have off the coast a series of volcanic islands or volcanic arcs, much like modern day Japan. Well, here we are at the roots of the volcanoes. Time and erosion have done their work, leaving only craggy remains which frame these really beautiful, tranquil coves that dot this part of the coastline. Now contrast this tranquility with the explosive violence of the past, when you had hot, molten material spewing from the earth, moving down into steamy seas, when you had explosions of gas and fragments of rock into the air, settling on the earth, when you had really explosive mixtures of hot gas, rock fragments, streaming down river valleys and hillsides, etc. Really explosive times, spasmodic, but explosive. Now, you want proof of all of this? Well, here it is. a volcanic vent from which rock, ash, lava was ejected, some of which fell back to fill the vent.
Well, it looks like a mixture of uh, boulders of volcanic rock in ash. And in fact, that's what it is. However, with time, the ash is consolidated. Now, if you want further uh, evidence of volcanism, just a short distance from here, there is a place where lava has come from a vent not unlike this into seawater. On contact with the cold seawater, it has broken into bulbous, pillow-like masses, which move out and pile one on top of another to form a rock called pillowed lava. If erosion destroys some of the evidence of volcanic activity, it also exposes the roots of these volcanoes. Uh, we get a look at the plumbing of the system, if you like, and can see where molten rock on the way to surface crystallized or solidified at depth in cracks in the rocks. Now, at about the same time that the, uh, this volcanic activity is taking place, to the west, there are some pretty impressive movements taking place in the Earth's crust. Remember now, all through this process, the oceans, or the ancient ocean, is shrinking. The continents are moving together. Let's take a look. We have the continental shelf, the continental slope draped in sediment, and the ocean floor, which is being moved as a slab down into the Earth's crust underneath another slab of ocean floor. Now this is where the volcanic activity that we have seen takes place. As the oceans shrink, this slab is moved right over the continental margin, like so, taking with it sediments from the continental slope. In these sediments, we can read a sort of shorthand history of the ancient sea. The gray layers are shales, which were deposited in very quiet water. The white layers are sands, which were on the continental slope and came streaming down that slope because of sort of underwater landslides, if you like, caused by maybe a violent storm, an earthquake. This process of sedimentation continued until the character of that ancient sea was really unalterably altered by the great earth movements that took place. These sediments were carried 50 miles from where they were deposited along with that slab of ocean floor. They're fairly well preserved and not too badly deformed because they were not caught up in the vice of two colliding continents and therefore escaped the intense heat and pressures that existed there. Our seas contain a rich and varied life. Along any beach, you can see the shelly remains of such life. The ancient sea, 500 million years old or better, also contained life, maybe as rich as ours, maybe not so varied. This bug is a trilobite and is part of the family that dominated the seas of those times. Well, they died, they became extinct, and their hard parts were preserved in sediments to become part of the geological record. Well, man also has his record. This abandoned outport is, if you like, a fossil outport and is part of man's history. As the seafloor is 